in modern society's search for more aesthetically pleasing and shelf-stable fruit, we often sacrifice taste and nutrition for looks and um, delayed spoilage. And this is the case with a very common wild plant available throughout most of early June called Fragraria, or wild strawberry. And wild strawberry grows in the same conditions that the domesticated versions would. Um, typically in open fields, uh, covered by grass, low to the ground. And they can often be difficult to find. They kind of hide themselves away. Um, they feature a pelosa, or hairy leaf. And the leaf is divided in three, like the standard domestic strawberry would be. And they produce fruits that range from the size of your thumbnail to uh, the size maybe of your thumb. These are larger fruits, typically they're a bit smaller than this. And when you find a patch, typically they grow in profusion. This, this whole area is all covered in wild strawberry, hundreds of them. So. Yule Gibbons has a chapter in Stalking the Wild Asparagus talking about the economics of wild strawberries where he discusses the value of picking wild foods versus spending the time caring for and tending and um, watering and weeding a domestic plant. So this plant exists for you to consume it without your interference. Thus, the nutritional quality is much higher. Wild foods typically have ten times the nutrient density of their domestic counterparts, and the flavor is much, much improved. Growing alongside the wild strawberry is a plant called Asclepias syriaca, or milkweed. And milkweed is one of my favorite June edibles. The tops, when these are slightly larger, before the buds, flower buds are open, these can be taken off, um, collected, and boiled in two to three changes of water. I typically only do one change of water, and I've never had a problem, but generally it's recommended to do multiple changes of water. And this dispels a cardiac glycosoid that's in the milky sap of this plant. Um, let me break off a leaf so you can see. These are the plants that produce those small um, silk tassel pods in the fall. And those tassels are edible as well before they turn um, darker colored. If the seeds are not black, they're still edible. And the silk tasseling inside of it can be boiled um, in multiple changes of water and then use almost like a cheese alternative. It has a very good taste. And these have hairy leaves on the bottom as well, and a smooth top. And they range from red tinge to almost all white veined in the center. A bit to the right is a plant called Rumex acetacella, or wood sorrel. And wood sorrel is one of the plants that's probably familiar to most people. Uh, when they were children, they would nibble on it. People would call it juices or lemonade plant. And it has these leaves that are almost arrow-shaped, um, like a dagger. And these have ox some oxalic acid in them. And for some people that may be a concern, especially if, with kidney or renal issues. However, broccoli and most of the cruciferous vegetables have a fair amount of oxalic acid in them. Beets, beets do, chard. So this, eating a handful of these is not going to cause an issue. If you were concerned about oxalic acid and had kidney stones or something of that sort, an option would be to cook the oxalic acid containing plants in a fat, such as a milk or a coconut um, oil, or use cheese if that's what you eat. Uh, and these, these have a nice lemony tart taste. Not a staple food, but definitely a good trailside nibble. And to the left of that is a plant called Potentilla. It's a very tannic plant. 
has almost a cannabis shaped leaf. And these are good for gums, for gingivitis, the young leaves of some of the less hairy varieties uh, of cinquefoil are edible. I don't really find them that tasty, but they're good as a, a rinse for a sore throat um, or for gums because it has that tannic quality that brings the tissue together and binds it. And a little bit further is a plant that I love called Achillea millifolium or yarrow. And yarrow is an amazing styptic. It stops bleeding when applied to wounds. And the flowering tops, which are this whole area of white over here, this is all wood sorrel and yarrow growing in this area. Yarrow tops are excellent when tinctured and the tincture is sprayed on you, diluted as a bug repellent. Ticks don't like the, the aroma or taste of yarrow. Uh, now they do mosquitoes. So. And this is also really good when put in drinks while traveling. If you put a couple drops of this, uh, it helps to dispel some of the toxins uh, and kill off any bacteria in water supplies. Wouldn't be trusted to use on water uh, taken from a river, but it does help to kill off any microbes that may be living in it. And it's also an excellent plant for causing sweating uh, in order to speed up the process of healing and colds and flus. This is just a brief example in five feet of the number of plants that grow around you and are available for your use and discovery. Hope this inspires you to go find them. Stay well.